Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Joe's Astrology. If you're new here, I have hundreds of other videos on astrology, learning astrology, chart examples. So if you get a chance, I would check them out. You know how YouTube does, they kind of bury all the old videos. And you got to keep making new videos. So in this video, I want to talk about what I learned from Sagittarius. And not so much Sagittarius in astrology, but Sagittarius in real life. And Sagittarius is, well, I have Jupiter, I have Jupiter, Neptune, Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus, and Sagittarius. And I have a ninth house Saturn and a ninth house Pluto and a north node in Cancer. The reason why I mention all of those is because they're all they all can be associated with Jupiter. I also have a south node in the twelfth, which is also can be associated with Jupiter or Neptune. And so with my life experience, I have been a a coach. If you follow me on here, you see some of my tennis videos. I talk about tennis. So I've been a teacher. I've been involved in the Catholic Church from a young age. I also uh, was stuck in a situation where I had to be in sales and real estate sales. So I'm going to talk a little bit about these things because they're all associated with Sagittarius. And, and before I say anything, I love Sagittarius energy. Everything I'm going to talk about, I love it. That's why I did it. And I still would do it again if I um, if um, things were right, and I might just do it for fun. So Sagittarius is considered the teacher, the guru, and the sa can consider a salesperson. Many people might not know that. So when I was working in real estate sales, I really seen this. So I'm going to start there. So basically, if you have know anything about real estate sales or sales company, what they basically do is they throw out hooks, and for example, the real estate, they'll throw out the they'll throw out a bunch of hooks. Become a real estate agent, you can make you can make a hundred thousand dollars a year, etc. Work for yourself. So all these people line up to get their license and take the courses, and then they. They go sign up with a broker, and it doesn't cost that much. It's like be like maybe like a hundred dollars a month, and they start practicing real estate. And what the what they don't no one no one talks about this, but what they're really doing is they're throwing out these hooks, and they're finding the people that have the good fortune. They're finding the people that have the connections, the money, uh, and then from an astrological standpoint. They're finding the people that have the Sagittarius that are kind of coming into their own and they're do this. They're do this money, they're do this good fortune. And they'll throw out the hook. So they'll go through hundreds and hundreds of people just to find, you know, the ten superstars that are gonna stay with that company. And then of course there's a bunch of little people that just do it part time and they'll make a couple of deals which uh, no one really cares about them. I mean, of course, from a business standpoint, everything everything counts. But no one really cares about them. They, as far as like them being a real estate agent, I don't really consider them being in real estate. As far as making it, they're doing a couple of deals. It's it's not changing their life. It's just a little bit of extra cash, which you could do with almost any business. So anyway, uh, I'll give a quick story around real estate. When I first when I first started. There was a, a woman that actually got me into it, and she had a husband who was a doctor, and she never told me exactly what she did, but I know what she did, and I know how she got big. And she was one of those people that, like, if I can do it, anyone can do it, and rah, 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 and the whole company, like, put her up on this pedestal, when in reality, I'm pretty sure she took her husband's money and used it for advertising. If you know anything about advertising in real estate, it is extremely effective. It's also extremely expensive. If you're if you're in a place like Washington D.C. and you're using Zillow, you can 
which I'm going to talk about this as well, set speculation with Leo and Sagittarius. If you're in DC and you're using Zillow, you can look to spend, you know, a thousand dollars on a lead. And around where I'm at right now, it's maybe a hundred dollars on a lead. And and Zillow has changed their, has updated their, you know, their business so that the leads are very good. But we're talking a thousand dollars to have a shot at making fifteen thousand. Or twenty thousand, and that's why it's so expensive. Because you can make fifteen thousand off one deal in one month. So, yeah, this woman, and I'm thinking of in particular. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that's what she did. She would never tell me what she did. Uh, for some reason, she's trying to hide it. And but yeah, she's still massive in real estate. Probably makes almost three hundred thousand dollars a year. And you'll see this with people too that are like that, like these some of these Sagittarius, Leo, uh, archetype types. Though when they get big, they'll uh, they'll brag about it. They'll they'll tell everyone about. Which I'm fine with all that. It's all it's all fine. It's just I'm just observing what happens. But this game that this Sagittarius company, Sagittarius Leo company, uh, plays these real estate brokers. That's the game they play. They throw out the hooks, and they don't know this. Uh, you know, not everyone can do it. The, the statistics are like 80 some percent fail. And <clears throat> the reason, some in some cases, the reason they fail is they don't do the work. Of course, they there's a lot of fear involved. They're afraid to approach people, etc. But I did the work. And I can tell you that I, at one point, called, I made eight or 900 calls a day. And that's with a machine, you know, 90, 90 contacts a day, 100 contacts out of those 900. And then they, uh, I'm not going to get into that whole story, but I was blocked. You're not allowed to do that anymore. You're not allowed to make cold calls like that. It's, they don't want you doing it. So, which is a whole other video, a whole other story. But I wanted to point out that this game is highly speculative. And the winners are the ones that are due based on their astrology. You could call it karma, call it divine timing, all these spiritual things you've heard of. Um, but when you know this, you're you're looking at it much differently than the people that are involved. They're com and a lot of them don't want to know. Even the people that are in the game, the Sagittarius people, their leaders, they don't want to know. They're never going to know. They're going to continue to think that, um, you know, they're going to, this is a, a sales people, sales companies would do as well. You know, you got to do this, you got to improve, you got to use that technique, you got to use this technique. And some of that, there's uh, just with anything, there's some truth to that. Uh, persistence, you got to be in the game for a long time, which is another thing you'll see a lot of housewives in this game or like people that are being supported by other people in marriages, etc., where they have the time to wait until something good happens. So that's where I think the average person. If you are playing that game, see, most of them aren't aware of it. Um, you do have to, I, I wouldn't do it as a part-time thing. I would, you know, team up with somebody, whether it be a husband or a wife or a partner, where you're being supported, where you can take your time, there's no rush, and you can spend two years building the business just like anything else. So that's one of my Sagittarius stories, and, and we can consider the preacher you see the preacher is a big Sagittarius one, a big Leo too, Sagittarius, Leo. Even Aries, we're really talking about fire signs here. Uh, to have that energy to get up there and preach. And like, see, you think of some of these big preachers like Joel Olstein and I uh, can't think of the other ones off the top of my head, but these like uh, prosperity preachers. I, I am not against going there like for fun. I'll go there all day long for fun. I, would, I love that energy. It's funny. But I'm probably not going to go by myself. If I have the right people around me, it's inspiration. It feels good. Um, but as far as what they're doing, they're doing the same thing. They're throwing the hooks out there. And people are going through phases. They're going through cycles and in their chart. And if they have strong Sagittarius or they have a need to, to find meaning in life or they are attracted to that, that type of energy, uh, you know, they'll show up. They might not show up every time, but they'll show up and they'll go through that. And they may even have like experiences where I might get into gambling because what happens in gambling, 
they might even go through experiences where, you know, pastor so-and-so said this and it came true. And um, now I'm, I'm sold for life. And then, they'll, you know, again, because it really had nothing to do with the pastor. It was just, you know, people, some people call it a coincidence. You can look at the astrology. You can definitely see the transits, why they're going there at the same time because they're heavily involved in this influence. But usually what happens, I, I mean, here's a couple more stories of my preacher stories. I went on this date once, and she was in town from a couple states away, actually. She came to this area. She drove like two or three hours to go to this church. It's called Life Center. It's a massive church. I didn't even know it existed because I grew up in the Catholic Church. It's, it's a lot different. They don't, they don't do that. It's not that type of energy. It's more of like a Scorpio type energy. And... So I went on this date. She was like trying to recruit me, and that's another thing you'll see with the, with Sagittarius. They um, they'll do these tricky things like they'll go on dates with you or meetings and networking and networking, and they'll they're really trying to recruit you. Like they use all their time very wi wisely. And that's a whole other story. But she's like, she's like, oh, you should you know the date. Right away I knew it wasn't a date. Right away I knew, or at least she was like, I don't like this guy. You can tell like immediately. And um, especially with this type, I can tell immediately. Um, and she's like, oh, you should come to this church tonight. And it just happened to be that night. So I went. And the thing is, it, they, well, they're, they're playing on the screen. They had this guy skydiving. And they were all cheering and getting hyped up over this guy skydiving. Like, totally thrill-seeking event is basically what it was. You know, it had nothing to do with. You know, of course, they're throwing in God and this and that. It's all about thrills for these people. Like you can tell this woman was talking about working for the corporate, working for corporations and how she gave up the corporate life to start her own business and live in abundance, etc. And it's all about, and that's all fine, but for her, it was all about seeking those thrills. Like, like you could think being in a corporation, it's to really be successful, you have to be around for a long time. Usually you have to put in a lot of work, commit for a long, long time. It's not It's not very fun. It's actually quite boring. And, you know, you could tell this lady was a thrill seeker and with that film up there, and then this guy next to me was hugging me, this weird guy. And that's the thing. When you go to, go to these places, it's, like, totally weird. Speaking of, like, cultish, like, these are the real cults. And uh, recently I had a girlfriend who, um, who came up who was – her upbringing, I wouldn't say she was Christian, but she would say she's Christian still. And she like grew up around that. And she, um, she took me to one of the churches and she even admitted like she did, she didn't even go. She wouldn't even go to these places to meet people as much as she really would want it, want to, because she would never meet people that thought like her. Like it was just it was always weird, even to her. And I don't know. I think to a majority of the average average person, I think it's weird. Um, you know, I do a lot of weird things. Maybe I'm not against any of that, but it's just a different kind, it's a different kind of weird. And I feel like the pastors, they um, they're he usually heavy Sagittarius storytellers, master salespeople, and the, the thing is, they don't even realize that either. They wouldn't consider themselves a salesperson. They're really selling. A lot of people know this. They're selling God. It's a massive business in the Midwest, in the Bible Belt. It's just, if you ever visit there, it's massive. And I'm not pumping up the Catholic Church by saying this because I can, the Catholic Church will get will get their turn as well. Uh, but not in this video. And even if you think of the guru, and I think the guru, the guru, like you think of the yogis and the Indian gurus, they're my favorite. If I could really get around one, I think I would enjoy them the most. Uh, if you're familiar with Alan Watts, he talks about he talks about how they do their their business and how they they are master salespeople too, and they they play games with you. They play games with their students. They play games with um, with your head and kind of string you along with knowledge and their wisdom. But they do that. The reason why they do it and why it's so funny is because they know that your consciousness isn't there yet. 
and they can tell. So they're, they're not going to give you the good stuff. They're not going to be straight up with you because it'd be a waste. It'd be a waste. It's not going to do anything. They're, it's it's called discovery. It's called the discovery method in learning. And that's my favorite way to learn. And I think a lot of people you know, might not like astrology as well because they want to discover. They want to discover their life. And they, they might not like the church or Sagittarius energy in general because they want to be in the state of discovery. That Think of Gemini, the opposite. A uh, person with a heavy Gemini is more like coming into life and really looking at the pieces. Like, um, okay, what is this? This is a, and you know, I'm going to name this. This is a, this is a mug, and it's gray. You know, from a very basic, basic level. And, and this is a man. This is a woman. This is what a woman does. This is what a man does. They want to be in that sense of discovery as they as they grow and get older. They don't want anybody telling them what what something is or what God is. They want to discover God. Not all Geminis, but that's the archetype in general. So the guru is really one of my favorite, or probably my favorite. And if you, have, um, if you want a really good book that gives an example of this, it's called the Agora. There's three Agora books, and um, all three of them are really good. Here they are right here. Written by Robert E. Svoboda. It's the first one. Oh, that's the third one. It's called uh, The Law of Karma. It's the second one, Kundalini. And the first one, At the Left Hand of God. I'm not going to get into what they are. You can check out the books. Uh, you can get them for free. Check out my other videos on... Um, some of my other videos, I talk about how to get free books. Uh, if you're not sure, or if you're interested in that, you don't know what video it is, leave a comment. I'll, I'll direct you to the video. I can't think of it what it is offhand. But you can get these books, you know, 60 bucks, $50 for all three, probably cheaper. Um, but yeah, he talks about that guru, the guru energy. Let's see if there's anything I'm missing. Oh, it's gambling. Gamblers do this too. Check out my video on Zachary Hubbard. I love I love watching his videos. I like Zachary Hubbard, but he's doing the same thing that you know gambling. Um, he's got Sagittarius Moon, and a Cancer Sun, so you see Jupiter both involved there. Uh, you know, you're sure a gambler uh, like them people on TV that that gambling coaches or gambling advisors. Uh, if you win. In those cases, if you win, then they might not even charge you. If you if you win, then they take some a cut of it. Uh, but basically, that's what they're doing. They're throwing out hooks, and then the person who's got the good fortune in the life or in the chart or it's their time, they win. They get then they get the money. Very very smart. If you're ever thinking of going into to business, the the salesperson, like the salesperson on the ground, he's the He's doing the grunt work. He's the hustler. He's the worker. He's the nine to five. He can make you can make more money in sales, but you're still a uh, worker bee. And the, co the the coach, the guru, the salesperson, the the teacher, he's he's winning every time because uh, you know he's not gambling. He knows he if especially if he's in a position where he doesn't need the money and he can take his time. Eventually, someone's gonna come along. They're gonna put that. They're gonna put the uh, put down the bet, and they might win once. They might win twice. They're gonna lose unless you, you're doing like some kind of parlays. I mean, you're gonna lose eventually. And I just just like a couple months ago, I had a friend of mine. He doesn't he doesn't like what I'm talking. I talk about, but I you know I talk about stuff, and he doesn't. I don't think he really listens. But he was talking about how he was gambling that weekend on sports betting, and I looked at his chart. And like there was the transit, <laughs> and it's like, dude, you know better. He, this is a guy who knows better. Like he's he's just doing it for thrills, just for fun, because he's because he's bored. And that's what most of it is, really. I mean, it, it, and these people don't know. They don't. Some of them don't know. Some of them do, but a lot of them don't. They're not aware of it. They don't want to be aware of it. They want to be. They're in that mode of life discovery, and they want to discover it for themselves. Uh, I mean, what else is there to do? And in life so I want to bring that up with the gamblers there's a lot of these gambler advisors and they're definitely Sagittarius uh, 
I got burned on Zachary Hubbard. I got wrapped up into it because I do think what he's doing is in numbers and numerology. And I've tried to mess around with astrology and gambling, and it's still very, at least at my level where I'm at, it's very difficult. And I just see it as an exchange of time. The time I'm putting in that, even if I was winning, it's almost like the same as working. So, um, yeah, I, I got burned because I, it's just occasionally, he, pro he probably bats, if, he, if he's batting his best, he's at 80%. That's not enough to make money. So, I don't want to go ramble on. I'm sure, I mean, I don't even know if anyone would watch it this long. That's why I don't usually talk this long. But yeah, what I've learned from Sagittarius, the fire signs, often goes along with, with Mars, or with uh, Mars and Aries as well. Grant Cardone's another one, taught me a lot. When I, had, when I started my business, it was like, you know, you find these people when, when, you're, when you're ready, you have that the teacher will appear when the student is ready, and I really, I found him when it was necessary, uh, when I had my tennis coaching business. And I don't think I would have done as well without, without that information. And, but yeah, again, he's one of those guys, you know, throwing out the hooks and genius, absolute genius. I mean, actual sales that this guy must have done would have been like minuscule in his life. You know, he probably made bank early on, like to get a couple hundred thousand dollars. And then at that point, then he was a, he was a motivator. He was a teacher. He was a sales coach. He was a presenter and it must have been, and he must have met the right person and really put him on the map. And then from there, like most of his life, he's a sales coach. Genius. Not, he's not a salesperson. He might've been a sales, he might embody a salesperson and know what he's doing, but actually as a, as a um, day to day player, a worker be maybe like very hardly at all in his life for sure. Because you can't, you, it, it, you think Sagittarius, you can't get large that way. It's impossible. And these Sagittarius people, they, they want to get large. They want to expand. Jupiter wants to expand. Um, again, it's for them, like I say, going to these churches, you, you feel inspired around all those people and, and all that the masses of energy in that one spot. And these people, you know, especially if they have set this Sagittarius, they thrive off that too. Um, and they, if they have like that Leo, they want to be, at least in their world, they want to be on top of the world. So that's what I learned from Sagittarius. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please like the video and share it. I've been seeing, I don't know, I didn't think I was getting very many shares, but I think some people do share my stuff and I appreciate the shares because that's what really gets me out there. I, you can see part of the reason why I have to make hundreds of videos and I, I can't really focus on quality or focus on videos like even this video. I'm not even prepared. I just kind of just did this all from the top of my head. So when you're not getting the attention, it's hard to make a quality video when you know you're only going to reach 15, 20 people. So I appreciate all the shares. And hope you have a good night.